I'm willing to bet that if you clicked on this video, it's either because curiosity got the best of you or you're thinking, Caleb, you have lost your marbles. Well, stick with me here because I'm going to try to defend why it is I am so excited about a $3,000 Blu-ray player. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and Christmas came a little bit early for me this year, so welcome to it. Now you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, why in this day and age does anybody need a Blu-ray player at all, let alone one that costs $3,000? To which I would say, that sounds like a bunch of logic to me and there's just no place for that here in this video. Uh, this whole video is going to defy logic and reason. And yeah, you really just kind of need to cast that aside for a moment. And I hope you do, because we're gonna unbox this thing, take a look at what makes it special, uh, but also have a discussion about the state of Blu-ray right now, uh, how it's kind of on its way out and how buying a disc player for a medium that is maybe going to disappear may not seem like the smartest idea in the world. But like I said, I want a chance to defend myself and explain to you why I'm so excited about this thing. So without further ado, let's crack into the box. All right, so as I'm cutting the tape on this thing, uh, I should mention that this thing was actually double boxed. I already removed it from its exterior box, but um, the Blu-ray player itself is 34.2 pounds. Um, which is heavier than some receivers and amplifiers that we have in here. Um, so you can imagine my surprise, shock, wonder, awe even. Uh, when I lifted the box, uh, I was like, wow, this is a Blu-ray player. Um, but as we kind of dig into this nice little uh, presentation, this is reminiscent of something that uh, Oppo used to do, which is gonna be relevant here in a little bit. The state of 4K Blu-ray DVD in the United States and abroad. Uh, doesn't look great. You may have missed the headline, uh, but Target, massive retailer in the United States, will no longer be carrying Blu-rays and DVDs uh, at their stores. They're selling vinyl, <laughs> but they're no longer gonna be selling uh, Blu-rays and DVDs. I think, you know, you'll still be able to get them at Walmart and some other retailers, I would imagine. But yeah, when you see a huge retailer like Target, uh, pulling out of the physical disc medium. Doesn't say great things about the future for the medium. And I'm worried about it. I think that Disney at one point announced that there were some movies that it was just not gonna put out on disc at all. Um, you know, Disney Plus is doing really, really well. A lot of people are using it. Fewer and fewer people are using disc these days. However, 4K Blu-rays offer significantly better video quality and audio quality than what you can get from uh, most, if not all streaming services. The difference is one that you can see if you make a direct comparison. Now, I know a lot of you out there are like, man, I'm perfectly happy with the way uh, the Disney Plus Dolby Atmos and 4K HDR looks on my fancy new TV at home. And I'm not here to argue with you. I mostly watch stuff on streaming services, honestly. Um, but there is no doubt that when I'm testing a TV or if I'm watching something I really, really care about, um, let's take uh, the, the Spider-Man Miles Morales movie, for instance. There are colors in that movie that you simply will not see unless you watch it on the 4K Blu-ray. It goes into the whole BT 2020 color space. Uh, very few TVs can actually reproduce uh, some of those colors. Uh, but you're not gonna see them at all, unless you, uh, oh my sweet mercy, this is heavy. Wow, this is heavy. Um, you're not gonna see those colors at all, uh, unless you watch the 4K Blu-ray version. Plus the uncompressed Dolby Atmos audio is you know, better than what you're gonna get from a streaming service. There really is a premium experience that comes along with watching uh, these movies on 4K Blu-ray disc. Not only that, but there are some of us uh, yeah, us, myself included, that have a bunch of CDs that they still listen to. Um, also, I have super audio CDs. I have DVD audio discs. Um, I have all kinds of, of crazy music and stuff that I'm not gonna find. I have music videos on DVD even. Uh, these are not available digitally. You're not gonna find them on streaming services. They're just not around. And they offer a really fun experience. 
Yes, this is a very small club um, that I'm talking about. And it's because it's a small club that Target is not gonna be selling 4K Blu-rays anymore. Um, so it's entirely possible that the medium could just disappear. But you know what? They said that about CDs. CDs are still coming. They said that about cassettes. Those did disappear, but they've made a comeback. Uh, they said that about vinyl records and look what's going on right now. I mean, vinyl is just blowing up. I love this little case that this thing came in. At any rate, uh, for this foreseeable future, 4K Blu-ray is, is gonna remain a thing and it's going to be the best video and audio quality that you can get. Um, and if you really enjoy music, digital audio, yes, you can go with high-res streaming stuff. That is a thing. You can also go with high-res digital downloads of audio if you want to. But you still need something great to play them back on. And like I said, CDs, SACD, DVD audio, that stuff uh, is out there and people need something to play it on. And the fact of the matter is, if you are the sort of person that is going to be uh, playing that kind of media, Chances are that you've invested in a pretty nice system to play it back on. You probably have a really nice TV. You probably have a great amplifier, a great processor, or, or just a great AV receiver, great speakers, uh, multi-channel audio systems, right? This is AV enthusiast stuff. And that is who the Magnetar UDP 900 is aimed toward. Now, they do sell a UDP 800, uh, which costs significantly less. I want to say that one's somewhere around the $1,700 or $1,800 neighborhood off the top of my head. And it can do a lot of the things, uh, most of the things, as a matter of fact, that the UDP 900 can do. It's just that this thing is built to the hilt. Every single component. I mean, guys, it, it weighs 34.2 pounds. Part of that is a massive power supply. Um, and all the stuff to back that up. Some of it is just designed for rigidity, for anti-resonance, for anti-vibration, um, for the best possible laser mechanism, like all the stuff, it's just built to the hilt, like cost no object, kind of just go for it type stuff. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, let me flip this thing around and uh, we'll have a look. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna break my back moving this thing. So on the back, what you'll find is that we have a couple of uh, balanced XLR audio outputs, gold plated, no less. We also have a pair of RCA stereo audio gold plated outputs. Um, and then in addition to that, we have RCA outputs for um, front left and right, surround left and right. We've got center, a subwoofer, uh, as well as um, some rear surround, surround back left and surround back right. This will not be offering discrete outputs for Atmos channels. So uh, if you want Dolby Atmos and you want it <laughs> discreetly output via um, RCAs, that's just, that's not an option. Let me take a sidestep for just a moment and explain why Magnetar exists. Uh, a lot of folks remember Oppo. The, their Blu-ray players were uh, absolutely the most beloved thing by the audiophile and videophile community. And then Oppo just decided to get out of the market entirely, which left a big hole. Well, I guess the hole's not that big, but it left a hole uh, for the videophile and audiophile community. Those disc players still exist. They fetch a ridiculous amount of money on the used market on eBay, on Audiogon, uh, Audio Karma, Reverb. Um, in fact, I have a few of those and um, if I needed to make a few extra bucks, I'd probably sell them. But I haven't wanted to because they are the only things out there that do what they can do and do it so well. So Magnetar came along to kind of fill that void. And I think they understand that it's a niche market that they are targeting, right? But also I wanna clarify that Magnetar, while a new brand name, is not entirely a new company. Uh, if you're familiar with Revon, R-E-A-V-O-N, uh, that particular company sells their wares mostly in Europe, but they also make premium players. Uh, Magnetar decided that they wanted to expand their footprint and kind of separate out their players. Um, and thus the UDP 800 and UDP 900 were created. Let's just pull some plastic off the front here so that it can shine in all its silver faced glory. So what's inside this thing that makes it so special and also expensive? Well, I'll tell you what I know about now 
and then I'll cover things even more deeply in the full review. Yes, I'm gonna do a full review on this thing. So from the audio perspective, the stereo, both balanced and RCA outputs, uh, the DAC that handles the digital to analog conversion of the audio signal, very, very important piece in the chain, is handled by a Sabre ESS 9038 Pro. Uh, that is actually an eight channel digital to analog converter, but it is so good. Oh, 32 bit, by the way, which you want all the bits, trust me. Uh, but that thing is just being used, just the stereo left and right channels are being utilized for that eight channel DAC. The other analog output section is handled by a Sabre ESS 9028 Pro, which is also an extremely great uh, DAC. But that's something that we learned to expect from Oppo back in the day. It had a separate DAC for the stereo output and then another one for the multi-channel audio output. And we definitely have that here. A big part of the reason this thing tips the scales at 34 pounds, 34.2 pounds, I think, uh, is the power supply. It has a 60 watt toroidal transformer built in. We'll put a little graphic of what that looks like up on the screen for you. Uh, and that is going to support all of the workings of this thing, but it's very specifically needed for the audio portion. Uh, along with that transformer are a bunch of super high-end capacitors. Uh, only the best components are used in this particular piece of machinery, uh, as I'm told by Magnetar. I mean, even the PCB circuit boards in this thing are supposed to be super premium. Another contributing factor towards the heavy weight of this thing is an all aluminum alloy body. Uh, it's got a reinforced double layer chassis structure. And then all of the internal components are shielded from each other using really thick uh, metal cases. So it's a lot of metal, a lot of copper, uh, all built into one 34.2 pound player. And I gotta tell you, I mean, just like, other than the fact that it's a little bit hard to, to wield around, it just feels great. If you, like me, come from an area where audio and video components needed to be heavy in order for them to be uh, high quality. Well, this definitely speaks to that sort of old school mentality. Oh, and one other audio related component is that it has a high quality headphone output with a very high quality headphone uh, amplifier built into it as well. Like I said, it's got all your audio file needs covered. It even has USB input to access the DAC. So if you wanted to throw your laptop or media server, you know, anything you've got your digital audio stored on, you can actually use the built-in digital analog converters to make that audio sound its absolute best. Now, how about the video side of things? Well, I'm assuming that it uses a very high quality transport for the optical drive. I'm sure that it has a uh, very high quality laser. Details around that stuff, I don't have. What I can say though, is that it supports every video format, disc-based video and audio format that there is. So you name it, SACD stereo, SACD multi-channel, DVD audio, Kodak picture CD. I'm not kidding. Like if it is a disc-based audio or video format, this thing will play it back. Now, obviously, as a Blu-ray player, it supports HDMI. You get two HDMI outputs. One uh, does video and audio, and the second one does audio only. So if for whatever reason you wanted to bypass the amazing uh, DACs built into this unit, you could run digital audio to another component uh, and use its DAC to process all of your audio. Now, the degree to which all these high-end components will actually affect video fidelity is something that I need to look into a little bit more. I do know that uh, I would definitely want for there to be the best possible video fidelity from this machine. I'm sure it offers that, but the degree to which it's better than any other Blu-ray player out there, that is something that I simply don't yet understand. So I'm going to learn a little bit about that and deliver that information to you in the full review. So we've established that it plays every disc, every format. Uh, we've established that it has exemplary build quality. Uh, we expect that the video fidelity is going to be phenomenal. I am almost certain that audio quality is going to be phenomenal. It is a Swiss army knife of the AV enthusiast world. Um, so what about that price? $3,000. Is that not a bit excessive? To which I would reply, have you seen 
the audio file world recently. I mean, there are components out there that make this thing look like a bargain basement bin deal. Like you can spend absolutely obscene amounts of money on audio gear, whether that's vintage Macintosh stuff or the latest PS audio or class A or Mark Levinson stuff. Like you can spend tons of money on just a CD transport. That's just the thing that reads the disc. That's all it does. And you can spend ridiculous amounts of money, more than this on something like that. So when you look at it through that lens, this thing is like not that expensive. And like I said, if you didn't need the absolute over the top version, there is the step down UDP 800 where you can still spend ridiculous amounts of money. It's just not the overbuilt, over the top, cost no object, absolute best that Magnetar could put together. Plus, honestly, sometimes you just want a cool thing, especially if you're an AV enthusiast. From my perspective, I wanna know I'm getting the very, very best sound I can from my entire music collection. And that means I'm gonna want a really nice uh, turntable. I'm gonna want a really nice phono preamp. I'm gonna want a great amplifier. Uh, I'm gonna want great speakers. I'm probably gonna wanna use good, but not ridiculously expensive speaker cables. This is a hobby. This is an enthusiast game. And this kind of thing, it just fits right in there. But also when it comes to the price, the fact of the matter is Magnetar is not gonna be selling a ton of these things. I imagine it's really expensive to make. It's definitely expensive to ship and the shipping cost is folded into the price. You don't pay separate shipping for this. So, you know, in order to stay in business, in order for them not to pull an oppo and just disappear on us, they're gonna need to charge a fair amount of money uh, because this is a very bespoke piece of gear that is very expensive to make and they simply aren't going to recoup their costs on it unless they charge a lot for it because they're not gonna make their nut on volume. So that is my case for the $3,000 UDP 900 universal disc player. It is not for everyone and it's not trying to be. It's for a very specific set of folks and if you out there think that those folks are absolute nut jobs, well, all I can say is you wouldn't be the first. But I will say I'm one of them. I'm the sort of person that geeks out over this sort of thing. So I'm gonna have a really great time testing this out uh, and trying to tell you what the experience is like. If you're on the fence, if you've been looking at this particular player and wondering if you should get it or the, the lower cost UDP 800 or maybe even one of Revon players, or you really just wanna go with a really solid Panasonic or Sony uh, 4K Blu-ray player. Is it worth the additional investment? We're gonna explore all of that in the full review, so I do hope that you come back to catch that video, if for no other reason, just to see me geek out about something that is objectively uh, ludicrous. So folks, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you got a little something fun out of it. Uh, if you wanna see more like this or just normal reviews of television and other consumer electronics, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like. How's that gonna go, Caleb?